Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. A beautiful overhead shot of Manasquan Inlet, courtesy of Jeff Brem. You can check out more of Jeff's photography at Jeff B Images over there at Instagram. That's Bunker, my friends. They're in the Manasquan and they're in pretty thick. And it's a good sign of things to come as it would appear that this powder keg is getting set to explode here at the Jersey Shore. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's March 24th, 2022. Sneaking in this report before things get sloppy and rainy on Thursday, but I'm sure the weather ahead will be beautiful. Now, before we get in on some of the uh, uh, latest, greatest catches in our region, let's take a trip back in time. We're gonna go back to 2021. And the reason we want to do that is because a lot of folks that I've been talking to in the last couple of weeks have said, hey, when, when do things really shake up and when do things really shake out? Well, if you follow some hokey migration chart on striped bass that was created by some mook in his basement garage, uh, his parents' basement, you probably think you got another month to go before big striped bass arrive. However, if you've been watching this video forecast, this weekly video forecast from the Fisherman Magazine for the last few years, you know that the big stripers are already here along the Delaware and along the Raritan Bay. Remember, we were talking about Bobby Reed's big 58 pound striped bass that was caught on March 31st, 2021. That was on a back bay plug. That kayak fish for Bobby was along the Raritan Bay, end of March. Year before that, he had a similar big fish, just about the same time, a 52 pounder. Again, last day of March, 2021. That's where we are right now. And this one, this is the cover shot from our April 19th weekly edition of the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. That's David Mitchell who caught and released this 50 pound plus class fish on the Delaware River, caught and released, using a blood bag. Blood bag is a, blood, is a bunch of blood worms wrapped up in tulle. Uh, what that does is it keeps those blood worms from getting those critters nipping at it, catfish along the Delaware, sometimes the white perch. It's also a good way of keeping the gap or the gape open on your circle hook in that entire throat. Very similar to the worm ball, which we've been talking a lot about, that Phil Shorentino at the Tackle Box has all pre-rigged and ready to go for you, all doused in uh, finescence clam oil. Looking at that April 19th cover for 2021, we were getting the first week fish reports around Atlantic City and Avalon that week of April 12th last year. The week prior to that, Dave Boopy Norman was on the cover with a 41 inch striped bass, also from the Delaware River, also on a blood bag. But the report section for that weekly edition had our first drum reported in the Absecan Inlet area also had reports of bluefish in Lakes Bay, and also bluefish popping up in the Great Egg Harbor River, or at least the Great Egg Harbor Bay, also down at Broadkill Beach in Delaware. Again, we're talking about roughly the first week in April. And it was April 26th last year, the full moon, when things ripped apart. Well, mostly what ripped apart were everybody's soft plastics. That's when bluefish, the racer bluefish, invaded the Jersey Shore Inlets. In fact, right across the way here where I am in Manasquan right now, I'm on the Manasquan side of the Manasquan River and Inlet, but across the way along the wall, it was a bloody mess. When I pop up, popped up there and bumped into Ian Gardner uh, and a couple of other dozen folks that were enjoying that bluefish blitz. That was around the time of the full moon of April last year, which brings us back to that drone footage from here. I'm along the Dog Beach, Manasquan, up into Glimmerglass as well. That footage from Jeff of those bunker arriving. Now these wonderful oily fish, these beautiful bait fish, that is the key. Because once these fish arrive, then all of our other wonderful critters, the ocean run striped bass, those burly blue fish, and also weak fish, you can expect to see them hot on their tails. In addition, Mike at Tuckerton Bait and Tackle in Tuckerton, he let me know that the first 33 inch striped bass here in the Great Bay region that was live lined a little after dark in the Great Bay area last week. 
Now, what Mike was telling me at Tucker and Bait and Tackle is some of those folks are actually throwing paddle tails as well. So it's not just the bloodworm bite, but it's some paddle tails for stripers as well. And I expect the switch over from bloods to clams to start any time in the next couple of weeks. So in addition to those line sides, you might get into some of those black drum, which we mentioned before should be arriving right around the first week of April. Now, for reference sake, I want you to circle April 16th on your calendar. That is our fourth full moon of 2022, also referred to as the pink moon. By then, I will imagine that I'll already have some jumbo striper reports. I imagine we're gonna get some jumbo stripe bass reported this weekend along the Delaware and along the Raritan where the masses congregate. You know what I mean, everybody's looking for the pack of people that are already there. I think some of the, the shore casters on the rare and the night guys are gonna get onto those big stripers before anybody else, and they're gonna try to keep their lips sealed, which is what I know the guys down in Atlantic, Cape May County, they love to keep their lips sealed. There are fish along the Great Egg Harbor River and some of the other interior stretches in Atlantic and Cape May County. Just make sure your boat is splashed and you're ready to cash in on the first wave of big fish and that you're loaded with the mojos, the majas, and of course the drift spoons. Of course, some of your best striped bass action right now in Jersey is gonna be up those salty rivers. Action last week I said was a little bit farther to the west of those bridges, which is where some of the guys I spoke to in Edison this past weekend, they were finding some of the best bite on the kayaks especially, and kayaking under cover of darkness. Mike Velez let me know this week that he was out Tuesday night. First hour, nothing. Then the tide changed and the fish turned on. He was on the Raritan, it was slow picking, but he had a great night, biggest was 34 inches on a peanut troller. Now, as those water temperatures increase in some of those salty rivers throughout the Garden State, you can expect to move a little east of those bridges, but water temperatures, I think still into this past weekend were a little bit down. And even though it's a little bit chilly for part of this week, I do expect things to really start to shake out in some of those other areas and flats. And I'm certain of it. I'm certain that things are just about ready to explode, especially when you talk to some of the guys who've seen all those gannets diving out along the beaches, along the Jersey Shore. In my guess, I'm thinking that's probably herring, uh, in addition to bunker. But I know those, those, those herring have got to start moving Great Egg Harbor is a great place for the herring spawn, always was, same as the mullica. So you can expect some good sized striped bass will move up in behind those herring schools in the coming days headed upriver at the Great Egg, for example. Of late though, it's still mostly smaller fish up along some of those stretches. Mike Reagan took advantage of the nice weather over the weekend to have some fun up the Great Egg using riptide bloodworms. He said there's plenty of action. He had a lot of catch and release action on some of those smaller striped bass also loaded up on the perch as well. But could it be possible that the striped bass spawn is underway now? Well, Brian Salerno is another kayak angler I bumped into there in Edison over the weekend at the Saltwater Fishing Expo. He shared this incredible video that he said was taken up the Hudson River up near Ossining. This was back on March 6th. It seems a little early to me, but what the heck do I know about striped bass? Basically, what do we any, any of us know uh, based on these migration patterns? But it's quite possible. That looks like spawning behavior. Striped bass up the Hudson early March. Again, bigger striped bass have arrived along the stretches of the Delaware. I expect to hear some of those jumbo releases over the next couple of days. Higbees and Fortescue, well, they had their first keeper. That was reported earlier this week on Monday. That was Mike Stevanis from Millville, a 30 and a half inch fish in the beautiful sunny weather that started this week while I was back at my desk. <laughs> that was also followed by a 38 incher along the beach Fortescue on Tuesday for Byers and Lowe's crew, the kids of the Byers and Lowe's crew out there about enjoying some striped bass fishing. Now with all of that catch and release striped bass fishing that's going on, whether they're the under slots or now as we start bumping into some of those over slots, if you're looking for a fish sandwich in the next couple of days, I would highly recommend winter flounder. I know it's only a two fish limit, 
but how big are your sandwiches anyway? You might want to give your hand to Winter Flounder. I know Chef James Berry here. He had his first uh, Winter Flounder weigh-in. It was the first Winter Flounder weigh-in of the spring over there at Jersey Hooker's Outfitters in brick on one of the Jersey Hooker's clams. Juice, or not clams, juicy bloodworms. I'm already thinking clams for drum. Speaking to some of the shops, though, earlier this week for the reports, at thefisherman.com, if you're looking for winter flounder, things have been slow to materialize so far at Manaloking, but I would expect that to change soon. Most of the folks are looking down around the Good Luck Point area, and you can probably set up someplace a little farther south, down into Forked River, Waretown, or Barnegat. That's for winter flounder. In terms of summer flounder or fluke, as well as sea bass, look for my article posted this week at thefisherman.com. All those options that are being reviewed for sea bass and fluke in New Jersey, reviewed by the ASMFC on Thursday, March 24th, which means we'll get final word back from the ASMFC on what options are approvable. And then our advisory committees will meet in New Jersey sometime early next week to come up with a suite of options to show all of us at the next meeting of the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council, that will be on April 7th. I'll have some word for you next week on what options we'll be looking at, I hope, to find out soon enough. Of course, it's thefisherman.com where you'll find our online fishing reports compiled on a weekly basis. I do them mostly myself through the winter, but I'm blessed next week to get our full complement of field editors back on the action. North, Central, and South Jersey. Also Delaware, Nick Konicheski's Beach Talk, and JB Casper actually got himself back in the saddle a little early this week with his freshwater fishing reports, but they will be posted next week so you can find everything on a weekly basis over there at thefisherman.com. Speaking of getting back in the saddle again, welcome back to my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, Jim, you know, it's great to be back. I was out last week with a little bit of foot surgery, but I think we're back in action here and just in time, too, because things are really starting to heat up. I'm going to start off over here in the Poconos with some local favorites checking in. You know, the pre-spawn bass season is kicking into high gear, and our good friend Josh Taylor, he capitalized out throwing some swim baits and getting this nice large mouth here in the Poconos. Now, same thing is happening over New Jersey. Our good friend Jen Wong was out doing the same thing, only he was throwing his typical jerk baits. Again, getting on some really nice uh, pre-spawn bass. But Jen says also in that mix, there's a very aggressive pickerel bite. So if you're out in those waters, be ready for those, uh, those things with teeth to jump on as well because they're being real productive. Now also on the lakes over here, we're starting to see the stripers pick up. Yeah, it's not just you guys in the sedges and sand bags. We have them over here in the freshwater too. Those stock striper are really producing. Lake All and Palm Pack is kicking off in high gear. Uh, good friend Will Grouper out there hitting them early and being pretty successful. Now along with that, uh, we want to talk about the Delaware River. You know, that is always a producer for striper. And Jack Lane sent us this pick. He's out there by the Tacony Bridge starting to get into those stripers as well. Now, you know, as we talk about the river, it's always time to talk about our shad watch, you know, and they're starting to hit now, so it's time that we kick that in high gear for 2022. Uh, I talked with Eric Fissler, the guy that runs that tournament, the Bi-State uh, Shad Fishing Contest, uh, and he was out catching some, uh, some great shad as well, getting a few in the net. Now, Eric also had a couple of great tips for us. He says, you know, this time of year, there's a lot of debris coming down river, and one of the things he does to combat that is he throws on a three-way swivel, puts about four or five ounces of weight on there and that keeps his flutter spoon or dart right in the strike zone. Now he says that the three-way works but works even better is a double barrel swivel and that lets it uh, the top one slide freely up and down this line keeping it uh, out of the debris and tangle free as well and it's been real productive for him. Now uh, while we're talking about uh, the shad season we're also going to talk next week a little bit more about the upcoming trout season. Uh, you know that kicks off in a couple weeks the official start and I'm going to have a couple of great tips for you guys from our friends at Trout Unlimited. So uh, we'll look forward to that next week. But for now, guys, go out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. As a reminder, trout stocked waters in the Garden State are closed right now. They will be closed because division workers are stuffing those lakes and streams full of trout again. We will come back with our opening day trout season on April 9th. 
So don't go fishing for trout in trout stocked waters right now. Wait until April 9th. It should be a goodie. Make sure you go over to NewJerseyFishAndWildlife.com to get your freshwater uh, fishing license and trout stamp. Also, of course, don't forget saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. You need to be registered in salt water if you want to fish in salt water. Registrations are also underway for the Fred Rung Memorial Striped Bass Derby. It's a catch, tag, photo, and release contest. It's presented by the Hudson, Fisherman, uh, the Hudson River Fishermen's Association. That's going to run from April 16th until May 15th. Again, registrations are underway. Uh, some of the folks from the HRFA through this tournament Give big back to the Northeast Striped Bass Study presented by the Fisherman Magazine. You can get details and register for that catch and release contest at thehrfa.org forward slash derby. On April 6th, the New Jersey Beach Buggy Association will again be sponsoring one of their online Zoom uh, discussions on driving the beaches. That's an online Zoom. You can register for that April 6th class learn how to drive the beaches or improve your beach buggy skills uh, you can get in touch with doug taylor his email address is fishtrek at comcast.net um, i would imagine a lot of those buggy guys are going to be out there in seaside this weekend for the grumpy special it's the spring has sprung sales event at grumpy's tackle in seaside that's saturday and sunday march 26th and 27th john from scabelli lures is going to be there on saturday which is why you can expect the line to be around the corner well before the doors open at 7 a.m on saturday and in addition to the great uh, uh, specials, the savings, the Scabellis, you've also got some great seminars coming up this weekend. Stanley from SNS Bucktails is going to be on the stage, so to speak, at 1030. You've got surf casting legend Shell Karras. He's talking at noon. And then kayak master Bob McMaster, along with Scott Pinky Thomas. We talk in kayak fishing at 1:30. That's Saturday at Grumpy's. Should be a great event to gear up for the spring run. Congratulations to somebody, a couple of guys who geared up and didn't even know it. That would be Robert Mull of Whiting, who came to get his new, uh, new subscription to the Fisherman Magazine at the Asbury Park Plug Show, and also Larrick Hampton of Staten Island, also a new subscriber who we met at the Saltwater Fishing Expo over the weekend. Both of you guys just won a Sterling Tackle Wide Tracker, care of the folks at Sterling. That should be sent to you guys at some point. I don't know about Robert, if he was at the surf plug show, I'm not sure if he's going to drag those wide, wide trackers through the surf, but why not? Met a whole bunch of great people in Edison at the Saltwater Fishing Expo over the weekend. Julie from Brooklyn stopped by just to say hello. And I'll tell you, the next generation of young anglers, these kids are hardcore. Watch out for them in the future. Definitely made a great showing there over the weekend at the Saltwater Fishing Expo. For those of you who tune into our video fishing forecast each week. May the striped bass force be with you this week. And don't forget, you got to subscribe to the print edition as well. Everything we do on the video this week, it's in conjunction with that print edition of the Fisherman Magazine. You can go pick it up at your local tackle shop at a Wawa, but I highly recommend subscribing, getting it delivered to your door every week. And then you get the digital access as well when you subscribe to all the great content that's there at thefisherman.com. In other words, I hope you're picking up what my man Pedro here is laying down. Don't forget to subscribe to the best uh, magazine that a fisherman can have. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fisherman Magazine. Stigacraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Stigacraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Stigacraft.com for a dealer near you.